basics. Ever since I worked on a few projects like an analog neural net and backscatter comms that were so specialized in low power that they designed their own IC, I've had the itch to learn more about how to create these application-specific integrated circuits. Hi, I'm Pat Deegan, co-founder of Psychogenic Technologies, and if you're curious about what goes into actually creating ASICs and are wondering how you'd do that yourself, then I've got a treat for you. I'll show you how to get started right this minute and create a MOSFET before your very eyes. But first, here's how I'm going to go deep and learn the nitty gritty. I knew of Matt Venn thanks to his work with open source tool chains for RTL synthesis and verification. And when I learned that he created a course for going from zero to ASIC, I immediately registered. The things that attracted me to the course are obviously learning how to design these things, but also the focus on using free and open source technology. With the Sky130 PDK, OpenLane, and a bunch of other tools, you can get running with everything you need to go from knowing nothing to actually designing ICs without dealing with crazy licensing fees or closed tool chains and vendor lock-in. Now, creating the photo masks used in the production of ICs costs a ton. But by combining many projects into a single wafer, everybody splits the expense. So the best part is that once you're done the course, you can actually submit your design for inclusion in a multi-project wafer and have your chip produced. Imagine holding something you've designed down to the nanometer scale. And that's really cool. I enrolled a few months ago, but I finally have the time to dive in and get my hands dirty learning to design ASICs. There's lots to learn, and the course walks you through designing the basic building blocks like caps and MOSFETs into digital design and verification through the entire workflow and finally getting on board the Google Skywater eFabless shuttle to make your designs real chips. This is a great time to get started, so that's what I'm going to do. At this point, I'm at part one of five, and I've already made some interesting discoveries about simulation with ng-spice, using layout tools, and more. I'll be posting details about those finds and everything else I encounter here, and title the content with the keyword ASIC or something, so you can catch them when they come out. For right now, I want to show you something pretty sweet that's a quick intro and lets you play without installing anything at all, the Silly Wiz. There's a step-by-step -step tutorial that walks you through everything, but let's do a couple of quick examples. All right, check this out. So this is the Silly Whiz interface, and it's pretty much more whiz than it is silly, as you'll see soon. Uh, I find it pretty cool. So uh, let's start with something really easy. I've got this polyres material here uh, selected, and I'm gonna draw something. All you do is basically go into the canvas and draw a little square, and that's it, your rectangle. And what have I made? Well, it's a resistor. Hmm, not very useful right now, but that's all it takes. This is semiconductor, I've got a little strip. It's a resistor. Cool. Now you can actually see the cross-section view, which is not very interesting right now. It's right here. So that's cool. Now um, let's do something a little more interesting. Let's go and make a, a voltage divider. So now I've got, well, what will be two resistors. It's just one big strip. It's more like a potentiometer actually. So uh, let's see. I'm going to put some vias here because we need to connect this to the outside world. Uh, so I'm going to put one here and one here and one here. And if you look at the cross section there, you can see they're building on top. So what we're trying to do is get to metal one so that we can actually connect things to electric things. So I'm going to put three vias here. And as you can see, these squares. Okay. So now I've got a little sandwich. Not super duper useful. Now I'm going to tie them to something. And some of the magic here depends on naming things correctly. So basically what you want to do is call one of them, uh, set the label to in. Uh, whoop, whoop, label must be, yes, yes. Sorry about that. Sorry, Mr. Wizard. Okay, now I'm going to set a label to one of these magical keywords, which is in. I'm going to set this one, which is in the middle of our divider here, to out. And then this resistor will go to ground, which by convention here is VSS. Okay, well, look at that. So now what happens is that this spice is being generated here and we have some resistors detected. Okay, so we can look at the simulation and well, nothing very interesting is happening at this stage. Why is that? I think that this resistor is just too small. So uh, the value is small because it is fat and it's letting everybody through like there's no tomorrow. So here we go. I'm going to try that. Well, oh, suddenly we have a voltage divider action here. So at four volts, we're a little bit under two, which means we're a little less than half the resistance in that one. So let's see what that says. So we've got oh, a little less, yeah. So 7K and 4.5K. So I'm going to try to get it to a half. Uh, it's shorter, so it's got less resistance in general, so I'm going to make it a lot thinner. Let's try this. Ooh, I think we're getting close. So 11K, 8K. 
whatever, voltage divider. Now, I promised a MOSFET, so <laughs> let's do that. I'm going to clear this out. A little more complicated, but uh, more interesting as well. So uh, first of all, everything is built on a single substrate, and this is a P-type material doped with holes. I'm a physicist first, and I always found the uh, traveling hole thing a little bit annoying, uh, but uh, it's actually a useful tool for thinking. Anyway, so we've got this P-substrate, and what we're going to need is to create our MOSFET. So I'm going to choose this polysilicone, which is actually exactly the same uh, material as this polyres. It's just that for that uh, spice magic down there to work, uh, we need to kind of separate them out in different layers. So um, polysilicone is going to be our gate, and we're just going to make a fat gate here. And under that gate and diffusion. So that's another thing under that gate. I said you can do them in any order, but uh, the process is the process. So here we look at the cross section. We can see the end diffusion is actually diffused inside to the P. So this P stuff becomes uh, N stuff. And the gate is on top and it's actually masking that part of the process. So the diffusion doesn't make it through. So this middle part stays uh, P. So what do we have here? We've got N and some gate uh, insulated here from the rest and another N. And Spice has actually detected an NMOS. That's pretty cool, okay. So we have a MOSFET here, but we don't, uh, we can't actually use it because we need to connect it to the world. Uh, we need our drain source and a gate, and we need a body connection. So for the body connection, this is already P, uh, but apparently we need to increase its P-ness um, so you do that with a P-tap here, which is another thing like the N, except that instead of making it N-ish, it's uh, more, more holes. So there you go. Now all we do is, like before, we stick some metal vias on everything. So I'm going to stick one here, and I'm going to stick one here. That'll be our gate. And here, now which is the drain, which is the source? This thing is perfectly symmetric, which I find very interesting. Uh, so you get to choose. So I'm going to put some metal metal, 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 and it's pretty forgiving. Look, I'm making these big fat squares everywhere and it just doesn't care. So look at that. My stack up isn't super pretty, but it's going to work. So let's call this, uh, let's tie this to ground here. Let's say this is the input. Let's tie this to VDD straight up. And finally, this one is our body. So we'll set it to ground. Okay, now what's the simulation say? Uh, the simulation says nothing, I'm so unhappy because what the hell are you talking about out? Well, okay, out doesn't exist, but let's put something. This is spice stuff, so we can do spice things. Now I'm just going to scale uh, the current through VDD there and see what happens. Well, this looks diode transistor -y. Okay, that's pretty interesting, but we're topping out here at uh, at some level of current of three three milliamps or something, uh, and the reason is that this channel is ginormous, uh, so you'd have to put a lot of voltage or I don't know what to get uh, some current flowing through here. So what if we shrink it? Well, we can do that. We just delete it and stick a, a thinner channel. Now, with this tiny little channel, a field will have some impact, hopefully. And look at that. So you can change it dynamically and it'll react. Um, if you're going to try it out, uh, have some fun, but uh, maybe you won't remember all of these things. That's okay. So everything is described in this tutorial. It's pretty sweet. And uh, that's pretty much it. So a MOSFET created before your very eyes. If you follow the tutorial, you can do caps and resistors and inverters and cool stuff like that. So give it a shot. It takes zero minutes to install and it's been a lot of fun. So that's pretty cool. I'm starting the course now. So if you want to follow the adventure, see some of what's in the course and learn some neat stuff along the way, subscribe to get notifications and keep an eye out on videos in this playlist. This is going to be fun. I hope to see you there. Cheers. <laughs>